many of the practices that I've te taught people, like the meditation, contemplation, Tai Chi Chuan, they can be pursued uh, in a very individualistic fashion. And that's always concerned me. And I would, it's important uh, to bring back uh, a, a communitas, a, a dialogic aspect uh, to people's attempts to respond to the meaning crisis. I think this is really, I was going to say integral, but that's probably <laughs> a bad association historically. But it's really integral to, uh, to the kind of response I think people need. Right, right, totally. So that's why it's important to me. Yeah, yeah. I have to say that, here, here's the thing I just want to say, just kind of start off, start off by saying, which we touched on before, one, it's, <laughs> we, so I just, I just hit the record button. So those, those of you who are listening, we got right on, we got right into it. And it was like, we couldn't, you know, we just, there's so much we, we both wanted to share with one another. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of it has been, what's just there for me is I just have just actually deeply appreciated one, the scope of your work, but also it's strangely, strangely enough, this huge scope of your work that includes literally almost everything, right? <laughs> Yet this felt sense that I've always had in, in every time I've seen you talk, every video I've, I've, I've seen, every interview that I've seen of you, how deeply personal it is at the same time. Yeah, very much. I, Those I think two things have just, uh, to me, has been part of part of what's really had me watch all of your interviews, um, and it, that just seems very, uh, very present for me. Um, yeah. That, thank you. I, I I think that's a very acute observation because that is that is very much an explicit goal. Uh, I, I I especially. Uh, for something like the series, but even in my academic teaching, I, I try uh, uh, as much as possible to do that, right? To try and give people both simultaneously a, 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 a broad scope, but you know, a very sort of present access to it, so that they're 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 being existentially confronted, not just merely informed. So that there's an idea here. No, there's there there there's there's a potential way of thinking, being. Um, that's on offer here as well, and um, and that should challenge you. It's it's a challenge. I mean, my hero is Socrates, right? And and so that that very much of that sense of that I'm not just I'm not just teaching in the sense of giving information. I'm trying to challenge people, confront them in a way that allows them to potentially starting engaging in self reflection and waking up. Yeah. In, in some way and and so that's that's very very important um and 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 and, and like socrates um, um there's a self-reflective aspect of that so when i'm when i'm teaching others that's also a process of socratic self-examination for me I, I i'm involving myself in the process i i very much see teaching as sharing of learning rather than the dissemination of information yeah existentially challenged yes right that's a that that word struck me yeah i'm, I'm trying to convey with that the the the, the sense that uh, a deep education is an aspirational project in the in the sense that uh, uh agnes collard talks in her book aspiration that we're trying to become someone else and, and this is a very odd thing for us to do because like we we and, you know, and L.A. Paul talks about this in Transformative Experience. We don't know, we don't have those sets of preferences. We don't have those values. And in language we were talking about earlier, we don't have that world yet. We haven't moved into that world. And so, and, and, and how do we get there? And how do we, how do we, how do we, how do we lead people into uh, the aspirational project of trying to become, um, you know, more, more, more virtuous, more wise, uh, uh, more, more connected, more capable of, uh, of meaningful connections to themselves and to others. And, and these, are all, uh, these are all deeply aspirational things. And, 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 and so you have, to, you have to confront people, right? They, they, it's like the Socratic aporia. You have to get people to, they have to be willing 
and, and, this, and, and I mean this in an existential sense, before they can go on an aspirational quest, they have to be able to fundamentally question how they're framing themselves in the world. They have to be, they have to be able to put into question their identity and the way they're identifying things and, oh, and say, wait, wait, there are real, the, the world and the way, the world and I in a co-creating fashion, we, they, they can be fundamentally other than they are and perhaps better. Wow. So there's a, a what I'm what I'm what I'm hearing in that is uh, that for you it is really personal. Yes. Right. It is very personal, um, in such a way that everything right. It, it's 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 that you want you want people to be confronted, right? And and you made this you made this distinction because, in some sense, what we're wanting is to become what we aren't yet. Yes. And that, that, that is, that happens through being confronted with that tension mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. the two. And so what I'm hearing you say is one of the ways that you offer that confrontation is by being confronted yourself. Yes. In your teaching. Yes, very much. And, and so it's, it, it's like you, you almost have to become a symbol in, in, in the ancient meaning of the word, like you have to be somebody that can enter the, like can enter the, the world of the student as they are, but can also like, I don't know what the word is, like tempt them, like open up them to the, this other world as, as a viable possibility uh, to them. And so, you, 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 yeah, you, you're, you're, that's, that, that is deeply enmeshed with a kind of self-knowing in which you yourself are also in this reflective reflexive process of, of transformation and change very much very much wow i it's interesting i just feel in the in the presence of that right now right I, I, <laughs> the presence of 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 which is often often uh seems to be the case with you, with your work is it is that there is this element of like you're not just inseminating information that you've already worked out no it, it seems like you are on the precipice of something Right, like that. Even if you've already known it, the way that you're saying it feels very alive, and so, so, so often, what I find in listening to your lectures is this experience of where I'm, like, at the precipice of thinking with you. Right. Oh, good, good. That's exactly what I want. That's exactly what I want. Uh, that, that, that's exactly what I want. Uh, yeah, I mean, even when I sort of have a prepared point or direction, I'm very much trying to get into the flow state so that I talk about, I'm always trying to do it as jazz, that, right, that, that there's all, that I'm open to the, the, the flow of what's happening and improvisation and insight so that the argument and the material and, and, and the world of the person I'm talking about have a chance to impact on me and speak through me and and, and generate an insight in me. And then I, I, the, the best lectures for, for me are exactly the ones in which that occurs, in which, I'll, let's say I'm talking about Plato, and, and as I'm doing it, I suddenly see something in Plato I haven't seen before. And, and then I can articulate that at that moment with people. That, 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 that's exactly the best, teacher, the best. Huh. When you say best, well, a couple of things. One really struck me when you said, yes, you do? That's exactly what I'm going for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's it like? I mean, what's it like just to hear that? Like, what? Well, it's, it's good. Uh, thank you, because that recognition um, huh. is it's helpful. Uh, it, it, uh, it makes me sense, it gives me a sense that, yeah, it, it's, it's working in some fashion. Yeah. So there's a there's a way in which where where when you said it gives me a sense, right? That's some. Um, I would imagine that sense. I get the sense of like, yeah, I'm already feeling for what I'm doing. So there's a sense that I'm that that I'm I'm doing the lectures, right? I'm doing these interviews. I'm on this. I'm on this interview right now. I'm in this conversation, right? There's all the particular things that I'm doing, but there's a, a background sense that I'm I'm taking on which I imagine for you what I kind of imagine with you that's kind of a 24-hour 
job, this sensing, right? Um, I, I, yeah, I, I guess. That's happening in the I, background. That's just to the sense that I, 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 I get, I just get the sense of a total sense of um, devotion to what you're up to, right? That's very much true. Yes, there's a there's a sense of devotion, and there's a, there's very much a sense a, a sense of this is it's not the right word. I, I was going to say reaching, but reaching isn't the right word because reaching implies that you're not in contact with it. But there's a sense of of grow of moving beyond that. There, that I'm always right. There, that there's this there's a moreness that comes in, and it enriches what I'm doing, and I'm constantly listening for that moreness and I'm constantly in love with it and constantly sensitizing myself to it. If that's what you mean, yes. Moreness. I mean, listening for that moreness. That's yes. such a great way of putting that. Listening for that moreness. Huh. That I, I, I really relate to that in so many ways. Cause I, I would say that um, in the practice of circling, I, we could very much say is that we're all going to, sit and get really present and listen for that moreness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I experienced when I did the circling. That's why I found it so profound because it resonated. It was, it had an affinity with what you and I are talking about now, mm. right? It, 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 it had an affinity with that. that I, so I, it was new, right? Uh, but it, it, it was also in, to some degree recognizable to me. I, I went, it was like, ah, yes, yeah. Now, would you say, see, to me, I've, uh, we, we talked about this a little bit earlier before, before I hit the record button, but the, that listening to that moreness mm -hmm. and your, your work as a philosopher and when you're doing philosophy, is that a lot of what philosophy is for you? Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, it depends. There's two different, I, I, I often rely on a distinction between the word philosophy. I value both of these, first of all, mm -hmm. well, but the distinction between philosophy and philosophia. Mm -hmm. Philosophy is this professional enterprise that's part of my job, my vocation, and I really, I really enjoy it. It's learning, right, how to, you know, critically reflect upon argumentation, theories, ontological, all that stuff, right? That, right? But then there's this other thing, uh, which is, and I use the word philosophy, and I'm hearkening back to Pierre Ardo's idea of philosophy as a way of life. One of his books was entitled that, right? Um, and Hado's, uh, the, the whole, the, the, that the ancient tradition that what we're trying to do is cultivate a love of wisdom. And that's another way of talking about this, this sensitizing myself, right? Listening for the moreness, like trying to get caught up in it as it flows. And that's definitely the philosophy that I'm practicing. And, and part, of, part of my challenge is to get those two talking uh, really well to each other uh, so that they're, they're mutually informing each other. D it, that seems to presuppose that they're often not, are they? Sometimes, yeah. So very I, I, often- In the world, I mean. Well, in the world and also in my own personal history. I mean, uh, I went into university, uh, I'd already sort of encountered the meaning crisis in literature. I'd read, um, I'd read some, uh, a, a really uh, important science fiction book that sort of opened me up. I was in, within a Christian uh, upbringing and it opened me up to Hinduism and Buddhism. And then I read, uh, you know, Siddhartha by Herman Hesse and I started reading uh, Jung and, 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 and so I was already opened up and I went into uh, university and I read Plato and, I, and I, I encountered what I would call philosophia, right? And the figure of Socrates. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I touched on this and, and, and uh, oh, Right, and, and but as I pursued that, the pursuit of wisdom, right, but falls off the table in academic philosophy at that time, and then it became this other thing, this reflection on science, reflection on culture, and I found that independently valuable. But the the need that was being met when I had encountered Plato and Socrates was not being met anymore by philosophy. So I felt those two diverge, and that's why I went and started doing Tai Chi and learning Vipassana and Meta because that's where I was. That was where I was able to again get into that, you know, that, that philosophia. Hmm. It's only recently that, and, and fortuitously for me, that those two streams have come back together hmm. so that people 
within academic philosophy and academic psychology are now seriously talking about things like wisdom and transformative experience and mystical experience. Right. Well, okay. So in in, in so so the, there was a way in which in your earlier in your earlier years before before college mm -hmm. that you were already reading some of the things that actually like wake people up a lot, right? Yes, very much. Yeah, very much. And then you got you got into when you went into school, mm -hmm. you started pursuing knowledge, and then you got more of of the of the part that like doesn't include the experience of knowing mm, philosophia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so then you went, then you went off and started to do Tai Chi. What were some of the other things that you did? A vipassana, which is a, a Theravadan form of mindfulness meditation, and Metta which is a contemplative practice. Um, and what, what was fortunate for me, and this was the original inspiration for some of the work I do on uh, the idea of an ecology of practices. I was taught all three in an integrated fashion. The Tai Chi and the Vipassana meditation and the meta contemplation were taught as mutually informing, constraining, and affording each other. Oh, wow. And, and when you were doing that, while you were studying philosophy, they happened at the same time, right? Yeah. Did you know, were you aware at the time between the connection between the two? I was aware of a hunger for the connection between the two. Um, huh. and, 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 and there was a very dim sense of not knowing what I was looking for. So, so the problem was I kept reading, you know, and I would read Nietzsche and I read lots of Heidegger, um, yeah. took courses on Heidegger and reading all this, and, 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 what, and, and it, it, it only slowly dawned on me that what I wasn't getting right from uh, uh, the philosophers, I was getting a lot. I was getting tremendous out of Nietzsche and Heidegger and, and, and people like that. But what I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting an ecology of practices. Mm -hmm. I wasn't getting what I was getting with the Tai Chi and the Vipassana and Metta. I wasn't getting, yes, you're telling me that I need to go through this transformation. I can't know this without being transformed, but you're not actually telling me how to transform. You're just telling me, transform, transform. But yes, but how? How do I transform? What's that like? And, and it's not just getting a skill. These kinds of, these are transformations of your identity, your being in the world. Like this, this is a radically challenging thing. So it's not just, how do I do it? Like learning a skill. It's like, you know, like, like how, what is it to go through this kind of self transcendence, this kind of self transformation, you know, that needs a kind of deep guidance. Um, and like I, I said, I wasn't finding it. Whereas when I, when I read ancient philosophy, like if you're reading Plato and you're reading the dialogue, you're getting, it's exemplified. It's not just talked about, yeah. right? It's exemplified. Or you, when you're reading Marcus Aurelius, you're reading the meditations, he's not just making claims. He's also taking you through spiritual exercises that are transforming your consciousness and cognition. Or you're reading Plotinus, my, one of my favorites. You're simultaneously going through an argument and you're going through this, it's almost like a guided meditation where he's taking you through this radical transformation of your co consciousness and cognition. And I'm saying, and I, and I want that, but I wasn't getting that. Um, Is it fair to say you wanted to be existentially confronted? <laughs> yes, very much. <laughs> yes, very much, very much, very yeah. much. And that there was something about the way that that was being explored in college, um, wasn't wasn't providing that. You're both you're both mostly just getting the instructions to without how. To yes, do yeah, very much. Uh, and I mean, it, and there was even like I said, there was even an absence of the discussion of wisdom. You know, there was lots of discussion about morality, not very much about meaning, except if you took a course on existentialism. Right. Um, and, and, and the topic of wisdom. I mean, it's ironic in this discipline by Philea Sophia that has wisdom in its name, that wisdom was not a topic of discussion. And right. so I, I felt that um, I felt both that the, the explicit foregrounding of the topic and the pursuit was being neglected. And then, as you mentioned, I was not being I was not I, I want to use the word guided as opposed to just instructed. I wasn't being guided. I wasn't being led into a path, right. um, which is what I was looking for. Right. And so you were, as you were, um, I'm getting the sense. So as you, as you were learning, right. Uh, it, in college, you're also, what, 
what were you getting out of consciously at the time? Like, what were you doing when you were doing the Tai Chi and no. all three of those things no. that you just talked about? Like, what at the time, what, what were you doing it and why were you doing it? What were you getting out of it? Like, what was it? What did you call it back then? So, I mean, I did think of it uh, pretty much as the cultivation of wisdom, as distinct from knowledge. I started to making a distinction between knowledge, which is like what you know, and wisdom, which is how you know. And, and, and that was already in my mind as a distinction. So I, I had started to frame it that way. Uh, what I was getting out of Tai Chi was, this sounds, I, I don't mean to sound trivial, but it, it, but it's really, it was really important. I, I was getting regular access to the flow experience. And, and, and that was, that was like, that was very, very powerful uh, mm. to me. And, and I started to get, and the flow experiences, I mean, the flow experience, I mean, one of its features is it takes you out of a, you know, a, a, an egocentric narrative frame of mind. Right. Right? And it gives you this radical sense of it, one mint and connectedness. And it really, and it's, and it's, a, it's, it's, you're optimally performing and, it, and it's optimally motivating. So it, it very much is a very, it's, it, it, it tempts you into transformation and it, in a very powerful way. So I was getting that. Mm -hmm. uh, from the Vipassana, uh, I, I was getting that, you know, that sense of self-awareness. Uh, like I often use the metaphor, you become a connoisseur of your own experience. You, you have the ability to taste and deeply mm. sense um, your own experience. And, and that was starting to make me aware and it was starting to link up to the work I was doing in psychology. So they were starting to talk to each other, aware of the prevalence of, you know, self-deceptive ways of thinking and being, and being able to not just know about them and believe about them, but to use a, a term we've been using, confront them. Confront, confront them. them, yes. Yeah, and, 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 and as an existential challenge uh, to be addressed. So that was one of the primary things the meditation was doing. And what was interesting is how one of the, it, it, like you, I didn't even notice some of the changes. I remember one of my, my good friends, uh, uh, Dan Chappie, somebody I do work with now, and, and other people, they, they came and said to me at one point, I said, what, what's, what's going on? And I said, what do you mean? I thought I'd done something wrong. And they said, you're writing, the way you write and the way you talk, and it's different now than it used to be. You're doing those things differently. I hadn't even realized that. It had permeated into my way of thinking and talking and only when somebody had pointed it out to me did I realize ah now I see now I see ah, yeah. ah. it's interesting because I, I I was really getting a clear sight you can you can almost feel kind of Hegel in the backdrop here it's like you, this the sense of getting you could say the um, this philosophia on, yeah. in terms of your experience of wisdom and then what was the other one that you call it the other part philosophy philosophy right yeah. and i as we were talking about i got this really clear sense of being in a dialectic between one and the other yeah and then you said before you knew it before you you didn't recognize it until somebody yeah. pointed it out yeah very much the thing about that seems important that that it happened before you recognized it without you quite knowing it. what's important about that What's important about that is, is, it's again, it was consonant with this realization of overcoming self-deception. If I was just saying to myself, ah, look at John, look at, look at, there's a sense in which I was suspicious of that. But the fact that this had permeated up outside of that ego narrative direction and had been recognized independently in a convergent manner by other people from the outside, that gave it a kind of legitimacy that made it very, very telling for me. Wow. Okay. Because it's like, okay, so, so I just want to make sure that I get it. It's like that, that, the dot, like they, that the dialectic started to synthesize, if you, sent, if, you, if you will. Sure. And it was already happening, and then someone else recognized it. There was something about that that let mm -hmm. you know, one, that, that one, it's happening, it's happening at below the level of like conscious recognition. Yes, very much. Because if it wasn't conscious recognition, you, you, could, you, could, you could still kind of bullshit yourself, couldn't you? Yes, very right? much. You yeah. wanted to it, it to happen and then just kind of interpret it, but yeah. that somebody caught you at it in a certain sense. Yes. Recognize it as true. Something about the, I get the sense of like a bottom-up experience. Very much. That's, that's exactly the right way of putting it. Yes. Yes. 
So just that experience, I'm just curious, if we just kind of hang with that for a moment. Just that experience of these two worlds coming together in the way that they did. It's funny, I, that I, 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 I'm, I'm now going back through all the work that I've seen you do, right, that I've experienced, and it, it occurs like a fractal of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that fit for you? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a, uh, when though, I mean, when those two, it's like a triangulation, when those two aspects talk to each other and I get a sense of recognition from others, it, that's when I, that's like this triangulation on the moreness that I was talking that, That's what really, that's when I get a sense that I'm, I often say I feel like I'm on the track of the truth when I'm doing, when that, when those line up in that way. Yes, you're on the track of the truth. And that experience, so, so one of the things I really, I was curious about and I wanted to ask you about was your work on the meaning crisis. I think yes. a couple of things. I think that um, the, that it, that you named it, right? Um, mm -hmm. And that you're putting it central in what you're doing it's so timely and it just feels right on, right? And I'm hearing other people refer to it. Yeah. And I don't know if you came up with the, with the term or, or, or. Yeah, I did. I mean, yeah. other people have talked about crisis of meaning, but I put, I put it together as a meaning crisis and then um, as a term and then uh, and get, uh, with, uh, working again with Christopher and with Philip, right? And other people, uh, Leonardo and Anderson. I, I, like, I want people to understand it's, it's, there's many people involved in this. Uh, but um, yeah, being able to put a name to it, but also a history to it, because the two have to go together, right? A name without a history isn't really a name. It's just a label, right? right. So for putting a name with a history to it, that was, that was sort of the aha, I think that. Uh, the name in the history. And do you remember, do you remember, was there like a moment where that? Yeah, it happened when I was teaching a course. So, I, I, so a, a good uh, a colleague, a friend of mine, Evan Thompson, was, was supposed to teach a course called Buddhism and Cog Sci, uh, Buddhism and Cognitive Science, and he couldn't do it. And he said, hey, John would be a good person to do that. And I started doing this, and I, and I was interested in, well, why is there this, I, I just, it struck me as this question, why is there this growing confluence between Buddhism and Cog Sci? Why are they talking to each other? Why? And, and, and you can see why it appealed to me. Here's Buddhism, here's the practice, the philosophia, and here's cognitive science doing all the theory, and now they're talking to each other. So, of course, this was personally very interesting to me, and I'm, and I'm picking this up, and I'm trying to get this, and I'm thinking, oh, there's an issue about meaning and connectedness. And, and then I, and as I was teaching and trying to lay out why they're coming together, it hit me. And then I, it, it felt like, oh, wait, there's a history here. There's a history of how we got to this place where this confluence makes so much sense. And I, like it happened when I was, when the first time I was lecturing. And as that course evolved, like, I used the course, I, I don't mean in an exploitative fashion, right? Yeah. I used the course, right, to, 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 to develop this argument in concert with students. Yeah. Um, and, and that's how it came about. Yes. In concert with students. Yes. Do you, and do you remember, like, the, do you, is it, so do you remember there was a moment where it came together, were you, like, in front of the students, or was it as you were thinking about doing the class? Did, was there a moment, or was it a gradual within an hour, 10 days? So, so both. I mean, there were moments where things came together and the proverbial penny dropping, and, and I would just see that, right? Like, there was a moment where I saw, oh, they're coming together because there's a crisis in meaning. There's a meaning crisis. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and then, and, and, then and, and there was, it, there was sort of a, a, a sense of the, the history, and, and there was a sense of sort of two aspects here, a personal uh, and, and, and a historical, and trying to get those related. That was all there. But then the, the, the sort of putting together of the argument <coughs> that developed as I was teaching the course, as I, you know, as I was reading so many excellent books, uh, Mark Taylor's book, After God, had a huge impact on me. Um, um, and, 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 then, and then what, happen, what happens, it's like, the, like you know, what Tillich calls a kairos. As I started reading one of these books, it, led, it, it, it just, it was so fruitful. It was like something growing organically. One book would lead to another, and they were just so mutually facilitatory. And, and, and as I was learning, as I said, I would be sharing that learning with my students. And they were, in fact, it was because of my students that I did this series. Yeah. I, I had done, the, I'd done it, and then I, 
somebody said you should record it. Uh, and I recorded it. And then one of my students had taken Buddhism in Kagsai with me. And he said, you know, the, the, the version you have uh, on YouTube, it's like, you know, the production qualities are horrible. The sound is bad. And, you know, like, let's do a really, really good version of this. And so, the, and so the fact, again, that, again, see, somebody from the outside came to me and said, we want to take this out into the world. That's, that's why it happened. And they came from, from, from the outside. Um, but in the context of having, of, of, of listening to you. Yes, correct? very much. Yeah, very much, very much. So there's, so, there's something that just kind of, um, I, I want to, I want to tease out here a little bit with you. So, so, sure. so I'm imagining this could have happened when you were reading a book by yourself on a retreat. This could yeah. have been on a number of different places, but it did, but it happened with others and it, and, and precisely in another's listening. Yeah. Um, that there's something about I'm wondering about this because because I I think why this one of the reasons this this stands out for me is that having been in some version of a similar position as you um, in my it, with with circling being a teacher teaching people how to circle right mm -hmm. and having these year long courses that I've been inside of one of the things I've noticed is I'm I've on, in some level, I feel grown up by the listening of my students. Mm -hmm. Yes. So many things that have turned out to be the things that um, weren't there, that are now most important to me in my life that are there. I are, were brought up by my students, were influenced mm -hmm. because the hunger uh, for learning and the things that they want to learn to had me go to a deeper place in myself. Yes. That in so many ways, I feel I, my face has been shaped in the last 20 years, literally, <laughs> by the listening of my students in that, that rich conversation. And I sometimes wonder about, like, I wonder where I'd be if I had never started teaching. I just wonder what I'd be interested in, like, if, if some of the thoughts that I've had and the insights. Yeah. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't do it without others. That, I mean, I, I very, what I mean is I can't do the kind of work I, I, I love doing. I, even when I'm writing, I'm almost always writing with somebody else. I, 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 deep, I mean, I deeply believe in that platonic thing that together in dialogue, we're capable of something we can't reach on our own. And that lines up with psychology. It lines up with Vygotsky and other things, right? And, and so, yeah, very much um, students... They, they challenge you and they literally encourage you in, in ways that you can't do for, for, for yourself. Right. And, and that's, I mean, I, that's one of the reasons I love teaching. Mm -hmm. and, and I also love that I can see that that happens for them. There's a recipro it, it's reciprocal. Like when they open me up, it, it generally is consonant with them opening up. Yes. And then, and then there, there is that kind of mutually accelerating disclosure kind of thing. Right there's there's philia, there, which is a kind of love, right? Yeah. It, it's the love, right, of of communitas, of, of people working in concert together. It's philia. It's philia is that 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 love I'm feeling right now with you? Yes, that's exactly right. Okay, that's we're philia. It. okay got you. <laughs> yes, and I th and for me, I, I, philia is really important because philia philia is 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 the transformative bridge between eros and agape. I think you get you get to you get from eros to agape via philia. Right. Oh, interesting. Okay, so there's a yeah. So so eros meaning, and if if I remember right, is like it's a love that wants to eat you, that wants yeah. to consume, consume you, be, right? be one with. Yeah, and that can be even mystical oneness. It doesn't have to be yeah. just sexual, but it's it's yeah, it's a it's it's let's be one, let's be one, right? Yeah. I think we would both recommend deeply consuming God and being consumed by God. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yes. <laughs> and then there's and then, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, I just want to go to the other one that it that it bridges um, agape. Yes. Which is, which is how would you how would you put put. So if, 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 if Eros is that consumatory, mm -hmm. I tend, uh, and uh, I think of agape as uh, creative. It's, it's mm -hmm. right. So I love because my love is creating meaning and a meaning maker, not because I'm getting something from them. It's, so the prototypical instance is, and it's, it's the biblical example, right? 
is the, lo the love a parent has for a newborn child. You, you, you don't love the child erotically, that's deeply wrong. They can't, the child can't enter into philia with you. They do not have the capacity. You don't love them for those reasons. You love them precisely because by, by loving them, you get to participate in the, create, the creation of God, right? right? I don't mean God being created, God's creation of people, if, if you'll allow me to speak mythologically, right? And so, I mean, that's how the New Testament sees it. I'm not a Christian. I'm not advocating for Christianity, but th that's, th they are... Right, that, that literature is the prototypical literature, I think, to turn to when you want to understand agape. Right. And so you're 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 turning you you're you're turning a non-person in some sense. I don't mean morally they're non-people, but you're turning a non-person into a a, a person. It, it, it is it is it is it is the deepest kind of creativity that a human being uh, can participate in, and and it is. It, you're not you're, you're you're transcending just making meaning. There's there's something more to it. You're you're actually participating in the, a meaning making that makes meaning makers. Mm -hmm. You're participating in a meaning making that makes meaning makers. Yes. Wow. There's something so. Uh, <laughs> what it takes. I'm noticing what it takes to understand that is is an experience of it. It's interesting. Yeah, a meaning making that makes meaning makers, huh? I'm just noticing as I'm understanding that I'm, I'm mapping it. I, I'm noticing it, bringing back experiences of, of of the past, and with this frame, and I could see it through that frame of you know, what it was like raising my son. Yeah. What's it like being with students? What it's like where I've been on the side of that. And you're right. Oftentimes as an adult, it does seem like that that um, in the middle one that you talked about, philosophia. Yeah, philia. 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 Yes. Yeah, philia really, philia really, uh, that's right. It, it, it's, it's, I, I'm struggling for the right word here, but it's it's the platform, it's the affordance, yes. right? Philea gets you into a kind of relationship uh, with meaning making and mutual disclosure and being present yes. that allows you to be unselfed enough that agape becomes a real possibility for you. Right. So that that particular entry into knowing, mm -hmm. right? Where and it sounds very similar. Is is it similar to to your the dialectic that was happening for you just in your life, we go back between when you entered into the more of the philosophy, um, like the philosophia, right? Philosophy that it is it something about was, was that it does that fit in there between what we're talking about now? It I get the sense of that on mm -hmm. one side, there's the knowledge, right? The concretized, right? That you're learning in school, and on this side is almost like the the knowing without necessarily the knowledge. Yeah, and that's what I mean when I think, what I said where wisdom is about the how. And that's why I, you'll, when I'm talking about wisdom and meaning making, I talk about the four ways of knowing rather than the four kinds of knowledge because I'm trying to talk about a process that you're involved in. And I'm trying to get back to the ancient idea, which I think we need to recover, that there are aspects of our self-knowledge other than our autobiographical, right? There's aspects of self-knowledge and of knowing others and knowing the world that can only be known within a process of transformation. We, we, can't, we can't just know them as the grasping of pros, proposition. We can only know them insofar as we are coupled to them and being transformed in connection to them. Right. Reco you used use the word recover. Yeah. Which is interesting. Is this, it's interesting. It connotes two things. Like, yeah. It's kind of it's like the the unveiling yep. and the veiling. And would you say by recover, do you mean something like um, I want to reveal mm -hmm. the, the the how, recover the how of it, and what? And currently, the how is covered. Um, so I'm, I want to I want to unveil the how and then recover the dogma of it. Yeah, a little bit, or uh, the, I would, relationship. 
there is there. I, I was thinking more, I hadn't thought about uh, recovering the dogma because there is a sense in which I'm trying to break the fixation on the, the, you know, the assertion of propositions. But I was also, yeah, well, we were talking about this earlier, the, the, the sense of like, like there in the, in that process of transformation, right? There's also, you know, there's, and I was just reading a, some of Stang's book on pseudo Like there's a, there's a terrific element of of unknowing you have to, there's a, a, that you have to go through, right? There's a sense in which you you have to confront you have to you have to confront the fact that uh, to use some of my language, you know, that the framing is never in the frame. The process by which things are being framed never comes up as something within the within your frame. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it's always, it's always, so, you, you can, you can only know it by being it. You can never have it as a focal object of awareness. So there is a kind of being able to accept that phenomenological mystery. I'm not saying it's a theoretical inexplicability. I can talk to you about it, yes. but there's a sense in which it's there, like, there's a phenomenological mystery to my own framing, right? Um, that, that it's, it's always only something that I, I, I know through. It's never something I know. Yeah. As an object. Right. And that there's something, yes, the background can't ever be, you can never see the background is another way of saying that you can never see the background in the foreground as the background in the moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You, 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 you know, you, 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 the eye can't see itself. We have lots of metaphors for this. You can't jump over your own shadow, all those, all those kinds of things. Yeah, very much. Right. And in a certain sense, it sounds like a bit of, when those two um, philosophy and philo ph um, uh, philosophy came together, it sounds like that that was probably a moment where those two were the background, right? And the foreground kind of came together and peeked their heads yeah. out from one another a bit. Yeah, the, the, there is, there is that, that, yeah, that's very good. I hadn't put that clearly in my mind the way you just did, but you're right. Though there was, there's a kind of mutually accelerating disclosure going on that way that's resonating with the mutually accelerating disclosure that's going on between me and the world or between me and other, other people, my students. I hadn't thought of that, but I think that's very apt, yes. Because huh. I, I, I think one of the things, um, one is I, 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 feel, I, I feel appreciative of your um, openness to be influenced by something that the questioning and the conversation, just like, just the sense of that, just the sense of like, oh, I've never quite thought about it like that. I felt, I just felt a sense of, of like, just being in participation with what you. Yeah, th that's, that's important to me. I mean, so again, I'll evoke a platonic distinction. I mean, Plato makes a distinction between philosophia and philonikia, which is the love of victory. And, 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 and so you see a lot of discourse today is, is built on the love of victory about, right, about, you know, d demolishing and destroying and debunking and, you know, and, and it's, and, I, and I'm, I'm philosophically deeply opposed to this um, mm -hmm. precisely because, and Plato represents this as one of the most pervasive kinds of ways in which we can bullshit ourselves thinking we're doing philosophia when we're actually doing exactly the opposite because we're pursuing, we're actually caring about victory. We're not caring about truth or learning. And so it's very important, right, to me to embody that, uh, that I, I should be learning. If, if we're in genuine dialogue with you, I should be learning from you. Right. Right. right? I should be, or, or I'm not, I'm not in dialogue with you. I'm just trying to get, my point across, etc. And I see one of the reasons why I'm so interested in, uh, you know, in this whole authentic discourse movement and circling is precisely to shift off of Philia Nakia, right, and back onto Philia Sophia. Yeah. With discourse, with discourse. That's why. That's why. Like. That's why I. I and like, to, so that people people will regularly have these kinds of things, like you just said, where like. Like, oh, right, yeah, John is learning from me, right? And, and, and yeah, exactly. Right, this, so it's like, a, like, is it fair to say, is it fair to say having a, the kind of listening that, um, that opens to novelty in, a, in such a way that creates stability? 
yeah, that's what I mean by the jazz of it, like getting into it, like the, the jazz of it, because you, 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 jazz isn't to be to, to do carcophonous noise. You're still, you, what you do is like, it's, 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 it's you know, it's self-organizing criticality. You push the form so that it breaks and opens to novelty, but you don't push it so it destroys. It, you, what you're doing is affording it to be able to reconfigure itself again and again and again that's exactly so you you see the, the the back and forth of the platonic debate as doing that rather than one side trying to crush the other side down yes yes so there's i'm getting a sense of this this i'm also getting this sense of the, just this dialectic in in a way or this synthesis that it sounds like is very much through your teaching and through your life and is even happening right now yeah very much that's what i'm feeling Right of of just that just that sense of your awareness to to I think what how we often call it encircling how I often see it is that which is most alive and mm. it seems like that which is most alive is like life has this way what kind of one of the things that seems like it makes life life is it has this way of opening to the to the novelty of of the environment in such a way that its openness allows it to persist yep. in stability. That, 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 that is so prescient. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, the most recent episode of the series, and it was coming on this idea that the core of cognition is this process I call relevance realization. And the main metaphor I use for that is, is like the analogy is the way life has evolved. Like life, what, what happens is it, it opens itself up to variation and then it puts selective pressure back down and then from that reconfiguration it re it revaries itself and then it reconfigures itself like it through selective pressure and so it's constantly right it's constantly evolve and that's what i see your relevance realization machinery is doing you're constantly evolving your sensory motor fittedness in moment by moment to 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 the environment, to the situation. That's how you're in it. You're constantly evolving your constraint on the problem space so yeah. that you constantly are refitting yourself again and again and again, moment by moment to the situation. And would you say, thank you. I, 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 I love how it's all like, <laughs> I'm looking forward to listening to our conversation again and just kind of feeling the, the movement of the dialogue because it's, it, it does seem like it's what's happening for me. Um, very much, very much for me too. That mutual space of an openness to things that have my life make more sense to me. Yeah, and, and, and like it's, it's, and, and everybody's hungry for it. Well, uh, sorry, that's, that's selection bias on my part. The people that I meet <laughs> in my work and who come to me because of the series come to me precisely because there is this hunger for this, this right? And we use, we use this word meaning, it's a metaphor you know, we're, we're something like what a sentence has. But it, again, it's this, it's this evolving, connected, it, like you said, it, it, it's opening us up, but constantly reconnecting us together. And, and there's a sense, uh, again, well, well, I'd say, like there's, maybe it, this is what you mean by the aliveness. For me, there's this, this sense of the moreness. There's something more than you and I, right, coming in and through this and taking us somewhere. Yes, yes. And that, when you said the, the people that you're meeting, yeah. there's an openness to it or a hunger for this. Yes. Um, the, the, I, I'm just curious. It's just got to be a trip being you right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I would imagine it's just kind of like, well, I'll invite you to be tripped out about it if you, if you aren't already, but just the sense of that you know, the, what on some level, even pre-reflectively, unknowingly, you've been interested in this sweet spot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This sweet spot of what we're calling the moreness or the, yeah. uh, the, the, the aliveness. Yeah. This mutual self-transforming self openness, right? Yes, yes. It leads to a greater stability to do more of that, right? That yes, very spot. much, yeah. That that even just right now, and also in your life, you are you are, you have people that want you want you to share that with them. Yes. In a in a way that you're you're actually in the process itself. Yes. Right? Very much. That your life is just a, 
about that? Um, so in that sense, it's a trip that um, I get to live out my Socratic dream, if that's not too pretentious. That, that's, yeah, in that sense. Huh. Um, I have, I mean. Live out my Socratic dream. That sounds, yeah. like a, that sounds like something. I just wanted to highlight that. Live out well, my I, Socratic dream. I, that's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I, I mean, it's challenging for me. That's why I was hesitant. I mean, I, I'm, I'm by nature very socially phobic. And so um, doing this, even doing the series, um, and, and, and that's why when I went to the circling and uh, Peter suggested, me, Peter Lindbergh suggested that I be somebody that they, uh, they do the, 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 the birthday event. Yeah. Every fiber of my being said no, which is precisely why I did it. Yeah. Uh, right, because that's the Socratic courage, right? And, and, if, I, and uh, if I didn't have that model, I wouldn't have done it. So that's what I mean. So it's challenging that way. It's also challenging in that Philean and Ikea is often bound up with, you know, a kind of self-aggrandizement too. Um, and, and there's plenty of examples of individuals who, who this kind of thing in social media and YouTube, that becomes quickly very inflationary for them. And so, um, so that's, that's why you might be sensing some hesitation in me. There's a part of me that, is I want to be, and I hope I have people helping, I want to be aware of the danger that I'm also confronting. Mm. Um, and is this part of the way that you're aware of it? Is by just what you're doing right now, you just kind of, in a certain sense, you pause things for a moment and say, okay, I just want to. Yes, yes. I pause it and I flag it and I acknowledge it. I try to give it its due. I try to give it its due diligence so that it has an active place in my cognition and in my communication. And what's the what's the it's again? The it's that we're giving due diligence to? The 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 the, the part of me that is keeping a watch on the danger. The part mm -hmm. of me that will alarm or signal a flag saying, "Be careful!" Uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. remember, remember. So there's a part. So it's like there's a there's an awareness of a danger. Yes, very much. There's awareness. Uh, danger so you're just it, so you're just making sure that that awareness gets its due diligence yep it gets to speak that yeah. it gets to speak because uh it, it's it's you know again there's the model of socrates is divine sign he had yeah. a thing in his head i'm not claiming to have that but he had something in his head that would tell him when he, when he was about to do something wrong something yeah. dangerous i've tried to cultivate something analogous to that for myself in this process and, and involve other people in helping to maintain it yeah uh, because um, I, I really, like, I, I do believe in what I'm doing, and I, uh, I think it's important, and I, I, I want to make, keep that the focus of what I'm doing. Yes. And what I'm hearing, actually, is, what I'm hearing is actually, for some people, um, that danger, <laughs> I can imagine for some people, because you said, you, you said you're, you're so socially phobic, by nature, yeah. So other people, that warning would be they have to constantly catch themselves wanting to be famous or wanting to mm -hmm. to, to be the be be the aggrandizing. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting this sense of that there's there's a uh, that one. Oh God, just to think about this, to, to to imagine you as socially phobic, or to hear that that that's true for you. And then here you are, in, in fact, right now, you're talking to somebody that has, has experienced you more, like so much more than you've experienced me because your, your work is out there so much that I'm watching it and then I'm coming to you and I have so, I've, I've, uh, in a certain sense, there is a, your name pops up and I'm drawn towards it and that's, not that it, until now has not been connected to you personally yeah. through the engagement. So there is this element where it's quite impressive to imagine you as socially phobic and what you're up to right now. Well, you know how you just described that asymmetry of knowing? I experienced the, that part of me viscerally as a vulnerability. Yeah. Huh. It's like, oh, wait, that, that this is a huge asymmetry here, and, and that's a vulnerability. That, I mean, yeah, 
so I, I, I try to acknowledge that. I, I try not to let it take over, but that's definitely, that's definitely part of what's happening very much. So when you say something like that, it, it, like there's a part of me that goes, oh, right? Because I, I feel like, oh, yes, he knows, he, he comes to me with way more knowledge of me than I possibly have of him. And so, so right there, there's a quality of like, where I know that on a, maybe somebody with a different kind of personality profile or a different temperament, right, may just love that idea <laughs> they like they pay for that idea right and that people have well, however i i think the thing that i'm appreciating is that that actually there's a part of you that that, that that's scary for you yeah i mean there is a part of me that likes the fame i i'm not i'm not trying to put that aside but there's definitely a part of me and that became very viscerally present to me like 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 in bed at night that found this scary, like you just said, found it very scary and continues to do so. Um, not, and not as bad as it was in the first month or so of when the series came. In the first month or so of the series, I almost stopped it because it was just that, that sense of scariness was just like, oh, what have I done? I've, I've, I, I've put myself. Uh, but um, again, the, the, the sense of being on the track of the truth and, and you know, being able to make a difference and to help uh, and the encouragement of other people, I kept going. The encouragement and your courage yeah. that you're demonstrating here. It's just, I, I, I have to say, I just feel, I just feel a sense of warmth and a, a certain kind of tenderness. Um, yeah, just hearing that that's, hearing in a particular way how much you've risked. Like this has really been a process of, yeah, your work out there has been what I'm hearing. Is it fair to say that there's a there's a symmetry with or similarity between the process of you being willing to be vulnerable in ways that are deeply uncomfortable for you, and the work that you feel called to do in the world, and that you're doing in the world. That it's been that you've had to have a real relationship with being vulnerable in that. Yeah, way. very much, very uh, much. Uh, and, and, and and I've I've met other people in this process of this series where that clearly uh, that clearly strikes me as how they're coming to this. So I, I get a sense from you of your willingness to to be exposed in the dialogue. And so I I'm I'm encouraged by that, and that that's something I look for because it helps me. If I, if I don't get locked into my own sense of vulnerability and I can pick up on how other people are taking a risk, um, that means a lot to me. So I was talking uh, on, Paul Vanderclay had me on his, on his channel. Yeah. And Paul, Paul and I, I, I love Paul. I have a lot of affection for him, a lot of respect for him. Mm -hmm. uh, some of his commentary on my work is some of the best commentary around. But he's a, he's a committed Christian. Um, and, and I make a distinction between a committed Christian and a dogmatic Christian. Yes. Right. Uh, he's a person, and I use this deliberately, of good faith. And I know that in his, and he, I could, he's saying it and he's demonstrating it, but he still, he is putting himself in a risky position by talking to me. Yeah. Because there are many people in his audience who are going to be like, why are you talking to this non Christian? Like, what, like, and, and, and some of the comments are exactly like that. And he, he, he's putting himself out there. He's putting himself at risk. And I sense. And so I trust him more, even though, and this is the thing. This is the thing that we've lost, right? I trust him more, even though in some ways I disagree with him more than I disagree with other people who I trust much less. Right. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. It makes total sense. So what I'm hearing is that there's a, again, I'm getting the fractal sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> this of, of that there's, there's it, rather than the what someone believes, you're listening, to, there's, there's a sense of a someone coming to being mm -hmm. right, together. And yes. there's an openness that requires a permeability and an openness to be changed, right? Which is always a risk, yes. right? And that, and that for you on this path, being kind of like, um, having some counter, like, like some uh, uh, social phobia, as you said, it, it's like you've had your own process of feeling deeply exposed or at risk. 
Yes. Right? Of these asymmetries where, where now you have people in the world that know more about you than you know about them that you're then facing and talking to. Yeah. So you're like, if it was just me, I don't know if I could do it. It's basically what I heard you say. It's like, it was just me and my thoughts lying in bed at night. In fact, I almost, I almost called it off because it was just, it was just way too intense. Yeah, it was. It was really bad. But when you, but this is what makes sense for you then and see if I can kind of walk, walk through it. It's like, it's, when you encounter other people that um, are demonstrating the same kind of courage, that that encourages you. Yes, that very much. encourages you. Yeah. That there's some kind of strength I'm, aware, I'm imagining that when you go, oh, okay, they're doing that too. Yes. Um, and I would imagine it's less of a, a result of deductive reasoning. It's more of a sense of somebody. Is that yeah, it's much? It's much more of a skill than an argument that runs through my head. It's, right. It's. It, but I. I mean. I. I. I don't mean skill in a heavy-handed fashion. I mean it like a Taoist finesse. Yeah. Uh, a, a finesse of like when you're when you're sparring it. If you've done Tai Chi, it's like jazz. Moves come out of you. And you, where did that come from? And those are the best moves. Those are like. And and, and it, it, it's that. There's there's a skill, but it's a finesse. Like to use Pascal's idea, it comes out. Uh, and yeah. And so. Uh, yeah, when I'm talking to Jonathan, or I, I'm talking to Jordan Hall, or I'm talking uh, to Paul Vanderclay, and they're coming from very different worlds, right. but nevertheless, they're, and that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to connote with this older meaning of good faith, not as the assertion of belief, but this commitment to connection, right, right? And, the, and the courage to it. Yeah. Connection, yes. And, that, and that's what I see in these guys, and, 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 and like I say, so... Um, that that that's that that that's nurturing and, and nutritious in some in very powerful way. I, I just felt I felt the nu I felt the nutrient again because <laughs> yeah. again it's it feels like what we're talking about is also the thing that I keep noticing I feel inside. Yeah. yeah. I, so what I mean that for me when what you're talking about is also what's happening in the talking. That's when you're getting into the participatory knowing, right? Yeah. That, yeah. So. I, I'm so, so that's, yes, the participatory knowing. So there's been, um, what, one of the things I've heard you say oftentimes is you've always made a point to acknowledge the impact of other people on your work. And giving very much. Credit. That's very important to me. And I'm getting a deeper sense of that right now. Yeah. Of like, like literally, it's not just that you've only um, had ideas that you didn't think of that have influenced you. But I'm also hearing is it, ask me if I'm hearing this, but like, um, is that the people that you're acknowledging, you're also acknowledging the way that you've been, you've received courage from them. That's been encouraging for you. I hadn't made that an explicit thought before, but that's exactly right. Huh. That's exactly right. I, I'm trying to thank them not only for the ideas we've made together, but you're right. How, you know, people like Chris and Leo and Anderson, Mm. they well, they're they're like my brothers to me they 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 keep me going in ways or or my, my wonderful partner she keeps me going mm. in in ways that again i can't do on my own um and um yes you're What's right that? i hadn't thought about that i want to i want to think about that for a sec yeah if we pause and just like yeah, just let that happen because I feel I feel joined with you in this tenderness that just opened up and appreciation. Yeah, there is. There's a lot. Um, they've been there for me. In in yeah, I'm thanking them for that. I mean, some people I thank, and I'm only thanking them for their work because I only know them from their work. But you are right. Um, there's people when I'm thanking them, I'm thanking them because. They have encouraged me in really, really important ways. Yeah, that's really true. I hadn't thought about that. Uh, I hadn't thought about that clearly like that. That that is really true. That's very true. Uh, and yeah. it, it it means a lot to me, uh, knowing that. Uh, because I, I've 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 been a person who's often felt alone, um, in some ways, and so that kind of connectedness. Yeah, that that's important. It's, it's a, I, I think I heard you on actually Paul's interview mm -hmm. talk a little bit about, this is the first time I had heard you talk about where 
some of your backgrounds from. Yeah. Right. And some, something about like um, being in, growing up in what re religious fundamentalism. Yeah. Fundamentalist Christian family, extended family. Um, and no, of course, when you're inside something like that, you don't understand it. But it, it, it was visceral. I mean, I, I, I would literally be terrified as a child as, as if, I, if I went to somebody's house that wasn't a Christian because, I, you know, there would, uh, there would be evil there. And, and, I, and that was or you know, I remember coming home, home one day and there was nobody in the home. And I, and I was convinced that the rapture had occurred and I had been left behind. And, there, and, and, and so I experienced this world uh, largely as terrifying. Um, um, and, 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 and a sense, uh, and I mean, I have to be cautious when I talk about Luther uh, in the series because, you know, uh, uh, there's that, that, that sense of being um, rejected or always on the point of being rejected by this very overbearing uh, sense of God. Um, and that, and the way in which, yeah, that isolated me um, was, 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 was quite profound. Um, and, and, and it, it, it's, it's funny because it leaves, it leaves a kind of mark on you um, that you have to be careful about um, because, because there's a part of you that longs for that um, even when you know it's not good for you. And you have to, you, like, it, it's taken me time and I'm still in the process. Longs for that meaning longs for the rejection. No, no, longs for that encompassing world. Because even though it's got that isolation and that rejection, it, it, it's, this, oh. it, it's this completely encompassing thing that oh. you are ensconced within. And, and, right, and, and you have an important narrative role in it. Right? And so there's, like, pulling that, like, so you can long for that, right? And, and pulling that apart from what I think as, as what we've been talking about, this sense of connectedness. Mm. I, I, I'm going to talk about in the series this, this, this sense that you said, it, the, the aliveness, the moreness, as an alternative way of understanding sacredness, as, as something different from a, a supernatural object that's permanently sort of important and, and stably, like a, 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 a particular model of God that I think, uh, well, what, what I, for me personally was very pernicious and punishing. And, and, and so part of what I've been trying to do is, is to separate that longing to go back, mm. right, which I know is not healthy for me, from this other longing that we've been exploring together here. Mm. And, and, and learning to, to not know, because that's easy to state conceptually, but to sense, mm. to sense the difference so that I can feel the one pulling on me without feeling it getting mixed up with the other pull on me. Right. That's been very important. Right. So I just want to, I want to make sure that I'm, I want to make sure that I'm, 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 I'm getting it because it's, it, it feels a couple of things. What you're saying feels so alive to me on so many different levels, both mm -hmm. on levels of what I'm understanding about you, but also my own understandings about what I've come to and also my own experience as well and in the whole conversation. So I want to just make sure, I just want to really appreciate what you're saying. So it's like the, that you come from, there, there, there's a carefulness. So a while back we talked about a carefulness that's there mm -hmm. um, of, of just allowing space for that which has an eye on, right? Um, being basically right size, right? Mm -hmm. Like you need to make sure and cultivate humility, right? Because one, it, 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 you genuinely are, right? Uh, feel deeply, deeply humbled to by multiple people. And so you cultivate that awareness, right? And that there's also a danger that comes with this um, experience of being, um, you could say, famous. Yes. Right? And, and that that's been a complicated relationship for you, mm -hmm. right? Yes, um, very much. I'm appreciating the complexity of it because although there is a part of you that wants, that does want to be famous, right? Yes. yes. There's also another part where it is so, it feels so exposing, 
and mm -hmm. vulnerable such that finding other people who have been willing to be vulnerable in that way, in a way that's not self-grandizing, right? Yes, yes. Has been deeply encouraging for you. Very much so. And, and, and so there's, as we've been talking about it, then we started bringing into where you come from, which was uh, what I'm hearing is, um, and I, this, this distinction, I want I just really want to just speak this, slow down and get really kind of get this distinction because it, it, it rumbled in me when you, when you said it. Yeah. That there's, on one level, you described being in a, um, in a, in a, in a childhood that had a, uh, uh, like was inside of like a logical religious dogma. Yes. It was a yes. world in which there was this overbearing presence mm -hmm. that could, could reject you at any moment. Yes. Right. So, so, so just that I just, cause I don't come from, well, I, in a different way I do, but that sense of overbearing presence that could reject you from any moment, any mm -hmm. moment. And just imagining that as being the, in like, proactively encouraged way to um, structure the world. That just, just that alone is just impressive. <laughs> I feel impressed by. Mm. But then you said something. So as you were saying it, I was thinking, God, that's really like intensely awful. But then you said something about like you said another thing that was really fascinating to me um, was that. Yet I have to, you said, I have to be careful mm -hmm. because there's a struct, the structure of it, of that world creates a kind of holding. Yes. And what I thought was like, almost like I thought of like a, a Wincott's holding environment. Yeah. That, that, that because I come from there, that's the, or that's one of my origins or, or the, the deep, perhaps the deepest origin. I have to be careful to long for that holding, right? That holding, because what comes with that holding is also a personal narrative of my place in it. Yes. Did I get it? Yep. Okay. That's right. And I want to distinguish that from, like I said, a, 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 this belonging to and participating with other people yes. in this moreness. Yeah. And keeping again not just intellectually apart that's not that's not enough they they have to be they have to be they have to be a felt to use barfield's word that's be like a felt change in consciousness if I, if I so i can sense the difference between them because they for a very long time they have been overlapped and confounded together and a lot of the discernment has been about trying to pull them apart yes so what i'm hearing you say is like one of the things that you've been doing consciously in what's been emerging and then becoming conscious in your work has been this uniting of philosophy and philosophia. Yeah. What I'm hearing is like, you don't want to confuse. Is it fair to say that I don't want to confuse what holds, right? Mm -hmm. Because if the philosophy without the philosophia, fia, yeah. right, is what holds, that's like dogma. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. But if I say that what holds is actually is the mutual um, uh, fittedness that that where I'm open, we are both open to being changed by one another and novelty in one another in such a way that that we that deeply secures us at the same time, that allows us to become more and more open, that 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 activity, that that relatedness is actually what is worthy of relaxing into and being held by. Yes. Okay, got it. Very much. Yeah. Wow, that was really something just to kind of walk through and re-say. Re yeah, it was, uh, it, yeah, it was, it was uh, reverberating in my chest. <laughs> yeah, very much. Huh. Yeah, just kind of letting that reverberate for a moment. Like, we'll, we'll both be reverberated by it. <laughs> What's it like, just like when you just look at your, like your life and what you've been up to and your history and the people that you're talking to and our conversation? What's it like just to have all that reverberate right now? How does that, what, 
what comes to you? Um, it's, it's, it's quite, it's, it's joyful. It's not pleasure. It's joyful. I mean, it's, um, yeah, it's, there's a, there's a sense of the deep connectedness where you like, where you're in a place that, you know, where you feel very connected to that environment. Um, uh, and, and, and you're resonating and, and it's alive to you and you're alive to it. it it's, that's what I mean by joy. Mm. It's, it's that kind of thing. Mm. God, it's so great that we're in that kind of thing. I feel like <laughs> that kind of thing with you too. The thing that, but what comes to my mind almost always when, when that happens, like it's coming to my mind right now is like, again, I, I, I so many people are hungering for this, right? And I, I would very much, you know, again, you, 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 you I want to do more. I, 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 I want to do more. And I, I keep trying to do more. Um, yeah. I'm trying to help other people do more. Yeah. Yeah. And this more. Yeah. This more is I just feel really present to doing it with you just right now. <laughs> I so appreciate it. Yeah, me too. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I will. Uh, I'll be giving context for just for your work and and links and stuff like that in the beginning and, and after. Is there anything that you would want to share just as we complete our conversation and hopefully just the first of of many conversations? I would very much like to talk again. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, normally what I do at this point is sort of, uh, I, you know, I point people to my series and um, also to the, 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 the forthcoming one, the one I'm working on, uh, the After Socrates series, um, which is in a very real sense, and I mean this word strongly, devoted to what we have been talking about. That's what this next series is going to be centered on. And so if people found this helpful, I'm hoping that if they turn to that next series, they will also find it helpful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to say I feel uh, that this conversation, the experience we just had together was really an experience. Um, very much. I, I, this, yeah, I found it uh, very moving and uh, like really, it was a challenging for me at times because I was trying to uh, keep in the conversation while also feeling, I was feeling very profoundly, like emotionally, physiologically. Um, there was there was a lot happening in me. Um, yeah. Yes. So this is like to, it's so interesting because this is very much the essence of this for me is is that what we call circling, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I've understood because for me circling has been a a horizon in which it keeps yielding to me, right? In a way that's like to know it is to be changed by it in the process of knowing it. And yeah, I feel, like, yeah. I feel yeah. like that in very in ways that I think I think I'll be listening to this conversation in a, a number of times just to really understand the richness that I currently feel to even mm -hmm. to, to to distinguish it and and really and really be nourished by it even more. So I appreciate this a lot. I really appreciate it too. I appreciate it both for the experience, and I it, it has. And this is not to be in any way dismissive of other interviews I've done and discussions. This was very, very different. And um, I felt, I felt that it gave me an opportunity to exemplify much more what I want to convey to people than just talking about it. And so I thank you for that. Oh, yes. That's about the biggest thank you that I could, I could get from you. Wow. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Oh. Thank you very much. Yes.